What's yeah. her name? Uh, Petra Lindros Kulquist. My name is Anna Isaacson. My name is Johanna. Mi chiamo Daniele Laszlo. I'm Elizabeth Walhalt. I'm Michele Gelmini. I'm Regina De Jesus. My name is uh, Sandra van Groningen. Sono Mauro Baglioni. I'm Miriam Grotes. My name is Justin. My name is Anneke Dekker. I'm uh, Sabine Haring. My name is John Murray. My name is Alexandra Babic. And I am the EBMT Nurses Group President. The European Blood and Marrow Transplant Nurses Group plays an essential role in hematology and stem cell transplantation nursing. The group is dedicated to improving the care of patients, both adult and pediatrics, receiving stem cell transplant and works towards promoting excellence in care through recognizing, building upon and providing evidence-based practice. Our mission is to enhance and value the nurse's role by supporting and sharing knowledge through communications, advocacy, research, training and education. We watch over patients' needs, but particularly we keep in eye patient safety, minimizing the risk of errors that might occur during blood transfusion, patient identification, chemotherapy administration, just to mention some of them. Hello, my name is John Murray. I'm a nurse clinician uh, at the Christie Hospital in Manchester in England. Initial ideas for um, putting this together was that we wanted to look at the similarities and also the differences that each transplant centre had throughout Europe. We all adhere to the JC guidelines, but we all maybe think of the guidelines in a slightly different way and our own internal practices within our own hospitals is often slightly different. Everything is the same but different, how we all adapt to our environments and our hospital and we still keep our patients safe and that is the paramount importance that we are doing things that are safe and adhere to both local practices and the guidelines set down in JC. Can you tell me your date of birth? just need to know it's you. Oh, 21st of the 8th, sorry, 51. Thank you. This is prior to a very strong chemotherapy. This is to help me rebuild the bone marrow afterwards. I feel I'm in very good hands here, because everybody knows what they're doing. They're all very experienced, very professional, very well trained. And that's just showed me the inside of the machine, because I was curious. This thing is fantastic. I'm amazed how normal I feel in the process. L'introduzione del primary nursing ha sicuramente cambiato il modo di essere infermieri e il modo di prendersi in carico della persona. Un infermiere più consapevole e più responsabilizzato identifica e intercetta precocemente le possibilità di errore. Nel primary nursing gioca un ruolo fondamentale la documentazione. Abbiamo introdotto un oncology nursi minimum dataset che ci consente di eh, monitorare e seguire il paziente andando a verificare puntualmente gli esiti dell'intervento assistenziale su quella persona. Eh, la sicurezza dei nostri pazienti è garantita anche da un continuo eh, scambio di informazioni con tutto il team trapiantologico. Abbiamo costantemente riunioni multidisciplinari dove vengono eh, discussi eventuali problematiche inerenti i pazienti o eh, i donatori sani di cellule staminali. Osservatorio. 14747 anche un gruppo B for zero no, si, ti danno sicurezza quello che dicono viene fatto e lo ottieni insomma ecco. e non ti senti un numero su questo ospedale ti senti una persona I am Elizabeth Walhalt, I am a quality manager at section of hematology and coagulation at Salgrenska University Hospital in Gothenburg. The nurses help the, to prepare the patient, they can deliver the stem cells. They can arrange an exam like a PET scan, make the appointment with the radiology department. So the nurses do most things. Uh, we are today even more professional. We do highly technical uh, duties. Uh, we have this medical chart where we check the medications. The nurse who, who will give the patient the medication will prepare the medication by themselves, except the chemotherapy that is prepared at the uh, pharmacy. 
And here is the workplace for the nurses. Tablets are in here. And here is the computer where we have medical records. I only take care of the cells. Uh, we keep them in uh, liquid nitrogen. For every patient we do a check before we start. We also thaw cells for one patient at a time because of the mix-up risk. I'm Miriam Grotes. I'm senior nurse in the Erasmus University Hospital of Rotterdam. In the 12 years I work here, I never had a big uh, adverse event, so that says something, I think, about the safety rules that we have. So all the rules, all the JC facts are uh, in our daily protocols. Your safety is something, it's our second nature. It's a big responsibility what we do with people. It's um, important that if you go to a patient, first you have to check with two persons if it's the, everything is okay as prescripted. And then you go to the patient, there are two doors. You have to open the first door by waving your hand on the sensor. You don't touch the door to make sure it's the right patient. You check uh, the name, date of birth, patient number, and then uh, you have to check it on the wristband. And you say it out loud as well, so the patient hears you. I don't think something can go wrong because there are so many different steps where you check. Where you check and where you check. I think it's for the patient it's, it's safe. Yeah, but that's because you have built-in uh, procedure, yeah. The treatment for patients changes a lot, uh, but the care for patients is still the same. You are with the patient the whole day. No one sees the patient more than you. It's time to bond with them. My name is Anneke Dekker and I'm working here since four years. I think most of the patients feel safe here because they know all of us, they know how we work, we explain everything, uh, we inform our patients, uh, we tell them what we are doing. I'm very well <laughs> informed, yes. Even if I don't ask questions, they are really kind to tell me what's happening, what I can expect from the, from the treatment. They always have to be with two persons here to make it 100% safe. Mm -hmm. There's always a double check in the laboratory, in the pharmacy, but also here. Patient identification is very important because most of the medication is made for the patient exclusively, so not for the other patients. I've been here two weeks and now four weeks. But it's boring. You sit in the whole day here. You must do something, but it's for your mind, it's not, uh, it's not good. We let them take their medication while they are admitted, so when they go, go home, they are used to uh, taking the medication themselves. It's 20 pills. And they... In the home, I feel better. It's for your mind, it is, but it's, it's tricky, and you, you never know. Here, here they are doctors, if there is something, they come. As soon as they go home, um, they know that they can call us anytime. For most patients, it's very stressful. All of a sudden, one day we say, you can go home, and that feels really terrifying for them. We're down with my sister and we're a hundred percent matched. She's had all the chemotherapy and she's now ready to receive my stem cells. Hopefully today or tomorrow <laughs> she should receive them. The wards that is really catering from the preconditioning to the transplant and engraftment is Derek Mitchell and um, Waddington Ward. But the post complication um, care can be cared of by the other two wards who are skilled enough um, all together, 56 beds. Room bed 14 and 15 is basically um, a positive and pre uh, negative pressure room. And you have the facilities um, inside all together. Um, apron, gloves, sink. So if nurses were preparing medication, they have to check and log on as themselves. So this is one of the APMA, so all the drugs is um, prescribed there. We sign and document in that. It's, it's kind of double checking, so this is why it's mobile. Because mm -hmm. we uh, bring it to the bedside to check that we have the right patient to the drugs that we are checking there as well. I've had a stem cell ultrograph. My recovery is quite late, so I'm coming up twice a week. 
to have blood or whatever's required. So I was up on Monday, didn't require anything, but I know I need blood to know. Low red cells. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's what it's all about. And at the end of March, bone marrow biopsy, and then we'll start, you know, looking forward. I'm looking forward anyway. The patient's room are on the left side. In every room we have two beds. So all the patients, if they want to have someone here, they have someone who's, who's living here with them. I have leukemia or you sir. Mm, I know a lot, but my wife knows even more. You know, with this one, I'll be reading up a lot, so I know pretty much everything. If they go online, it's quite fine, fine for me. It's better for them to read and then ask me, is this correct? I think so too. People. What are you hiding from me? And that's that's not good. Yeah, I know. I know the side effects. I wasn't. I wasn't aware that there were that many. And that I mean, I think I had them all by now. The patients are very tired for a long time. Six months on up until twelve months. A lot of patients have problems to eat and drink. They have, can have pain in the mouth and or some stomach problems. I feel a little bad now, but uh, maybe it's a little of a price you have to pay for it to live. I'm happy oh. I am still employed. Maybe in next month I will start work again. I think it's very good for the patients to be at home. It's em empowering for the patient because they feel uh, like I am in control now. I have to take my own decisions and uh, be a part of my disease, so to speak. I'm Michele Gilmini and I'm uh, the clinical director of the Oncology Institute of Southern Switzerland 20 years ago. I was sent by my previous boss uh, to Manchester to learn the techniques of peripheral stem cell collection and transplantation because at that time it was something very new. With every patient we were kind of inventing when guidelines came in. We had to establish our own guidelines. We had to learn to do things in a planified and predictable way. Having to do this process, we learned to improve very much the methods and particularly the security. So we had to introduce doctors who were dedicated to this, nurses who were dedicated to this. A new role emerged, transplant nurse, at the same time of the study nurse, specialized nurses who were taking particularly care of the transplanted patients, but also of the application of the rules. Nurses have become more specialized and they have taken over m m responsibilities that were doctors' responsibilities before. So this is how it evolved. And of course, now we are very strictly adhering to the guidelines and I think uh, uh, nothing can happen that we didn't expect almost. We have to predict all the possible problems and we have to be prepared how to solve them. It's one of the coolest jobs as well. I really like it. Yeah. yeah.